everybody. So we have the Oscars coming up and today I thought it would be fun to do a little bit of a extra video uh, about the best picture nominees. And sometimes, you know, we have those movies that were like, I don't understand why people love those so much, why they got nominated. And so I thought it would be a fun exercise to think about what are two other movies that I can recommend to you that have similar themes of the movies that are nominated, then we can kind of talk about it. And, uh, and maybe you'll find one of those that you like, um, or if you're a super fan of one of these Oscar nominated films, then maybe you can check out these other films that you haven't seen. And maybe you really will enjoy them as well if you like the nominated film. So it's kind of a, a fun little exercise. So I'd be curious for your thoughts of about these films and uh, so let me know so let's talk about the first nominee is 1917 and now the two films that i wanted to recommend to you that have similar themes first is hacksaw ridge and this film i think is very similar to 1917 because it's all about one person and their fight to survive in these crazy intense circumstances and it's one of those movies that just goes 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 and doesn't really take a second to pause and some people that's too much for them but I was really moved by it I really thought Desmond's story was incredible and you know he just one more lord one more lord I was just pulling for him the whole way was so moved by Andrew Garfield's performance and I, I, I thought it was great. And I feel like you get that same dynamic in 1917 where you're just, you feel immersed with these two, in the case it's two soldiers, but you feel like you're following them. You feel like you're with them through this whole intense period. Uh, and so I, I really love both films and I think they both kind of get that, that feeling. Whereas something like Dunkirk, which a lot of people might recommend, I, I, I really enjoy the film, but it, to me, Dunkirk is more of a group experience. It's about the whole battle. It's about the whole I think as opposed to being about just these individuals in this intense war experience. Uh, so then the other one that I recommend is Saving Private Ryan, which also has that sort of individual feel and you get the same scope of the battles. And, uh, and especially that first 20 minutes is especially intense. And it's almost like for 1917, almost that the whole movie is almost in that same intensity as that first 20 uh, minutes of Saving Private Ryan. And I think that, that the Saving Private Ryan kind of loses some, a little, gets a little slow, I think, uh, especially after you've been so built up by that intensity. But nevertheless, it's still a really good movie. It's still definitely very moving. Uh, and Tom Hanks is so great in it. And so definitely, I think it's one you should check out if you liked 1917. So then we have Ford v. Ferrari. And uh, a lot of people would say Rush for this. I haven't seen Rush, and so I can't really count it. I actually thought of quite a few with this, uh, but the first one that I'm going to recommend is actually, it might seem strange, but I'm going to recommend Cars 3 because Cars 3 is really at its core about, it's about friendship, but it's also about racing and sort of the 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 elderly <laughs> car passing on the baton to the new uh new car and uh the the build up to the sort of the big race and the training and stuff that's all sort of there and uh, the racing sequences i think are pretty intense in cars three are pretty gripping and i think it's the same way you know in ford v ferrari and then you've got the friendship of mater and lightning I think it can be kind of similar to the friendship of Matt Damon and Christian Bale's character. So <laughs> check out Ford v. Ferrari. The next one that I'm going to suggest, I actually have three for this one. The next one I'm going to suggest is the original Fast and the Furious movie. I think that you have a similar dynamic that kind of eventually evolves uh, between uh, Paul Walker and Vin Diesel, this friendship, this rivalry, this dynamic. Obviously, there's a, a undercover cop kind of element to it, a point break element. Uh, but this, the, it's probably maybe Tokyo Drift has more, but Tokyo Drift is so dumb. Uh, but it, it actually has racing. So I think that like five, six, and seven are better than this one, but I don't think they have as much racing in them. So if you want to have a little bit more of the cars and the racing, then I think uh, Fast and the Furious number one is good. And you still got that feeling of family and friendship and, and all of that kind of stuff. 
going on there. And then the final suggestion might seem like a weird one, but I'd actually recommend Green Book because Green Book at its core is about an unlikely friendship between these two people that are forced to work together and become friends and they're not even expecting to. And I feel like that's a similar dynamic that you have with Matt Damon and Christian Bale's character. Uh, they're, not, they're people that don't really like each other to begin with. They have so many differences and yet they force to work together and they become friends. So that is why I would recommend that for a Ford v. Ferrari. Next up, we have Joker. And for Joker, I would recommend the movie Christine, which is a true life story. Rebecca Hall plays this woman named Christine, who is actually the first woman ever to commit suicide live on camera and i think what this movie does that the joker doesn't do as well in my opinion is that it it creates a more complex character where she's kind of unlikable and she but then she has moments where you're really rooting for her and i there's you can really understand kind of why people are sort of turned off by her uh sometimes uh but then you see like her really actively kind of spurning the people that want to help her and so it just to me the environment is way more um relatable and understandable uh than the environment in joker which i just felt like was just like everyone hating everyone being the worst i it was just i don't know to me it wasn't as nuanced and interesting when the character isn't forced to kind of make the same choices because it's obvious what he's going to do because everything is so terrible and horrible around him. And so I, I just felt like this is a much better example of like somebody having a mental health crisis and, uh, and sort of spurning the help that's offered. Uh, but then also, you know, you feel bad for her too, because she, she's not listened to and she's not, so there's, it's a mixture. And I just, thought it was to me more interesting uh, and more sad than Joker. Um, but then you also have Ingrid Goes West, which is also about a person that goes through a mental health crisis. Uh, and in Ingrid Goes West, as she becomes kind of fixated on this Instagrammer mm -hmm. as part of this mental health crisis that she has. And things just kind of a spiral and spiral kind of until she's out of control. But I think that it's just much more nuanced and interesting to me and has a similar theme about kind of society and how we put pressure on people to uh, be a certain way and how we reject them when they have uh, when they need us the most uh, so I think it, they both have similar themes about mental health crises and society sort of turning their back on people that need their help so check those out those two I think you'll enjoy them if you like Joker or if you didn't like Joker check them out I think you'd like both those movies okay then next we have Once Upon a Time in Hollywood uh, the two that I would suggest for this for this movie if you enjoyed or didn't enjoy Once Upon a Time in Hollywood I would suggest La La Land La La Land is also a movie about people that are trying to make it in Hollywood it's about the business and it's very has very nostalgic moments uh, it's very well crafted the cinematography is really nice um you have characters that do unlikable things and are a little bit hard to report times uh but then you're also kind of rooting for them at the same time uh and so i just think it has similar themes about being famous and what we want out of life and our goals and our dreams and, and all this kind of stuff uh, and it has obviously some fantasy moments as well uh when they're like dancing in the observatory and all that kind of stuff uh, so I think it has uh, quite a bit actually in common with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, then the other one that I thought of is the movie The Artist. Uh, it's also about a movie star who comes on hard times and has sort of a, a crisis of work and whether he's good at his job and whether it, people don't love him anymore. Uh, so I think that, you know, kind of has a similar sort of spiral to Leonardo DiCaprio's character. It's also really slickly made. It's also an homage to a, a, a different time, a different era. And uh, so I think it would be a fun, fun watch. Uh, so next I have the movie Parasite. So Parasite, the uh, first one I want to recommend is the movie Housemaid, which we reviewed for our Criterion project. Uh, this movie is was a big influence on uh, director Bong Joon-ho and... 
Uh, and so this uh, this is a bonkers movie. It's a it's a thriller slash horror movie about a couple that takes on a housemaid to help them when they're having a new baby, and this housemaid becomes super uh, attached to this uh, this husband, trying to seduce the husband, and things just get more and more crazy. And the cinematography is really beautiful, black and white, uh, and I think it just has a similar sort of feeling of being sort of stuck in this house and uh, this feeling of sort of the societal divide between this poor housemaid and these this more wealthy uh, couple and a similar sort of thriller horror dynamic and so you can watch it and definitely see the influence that it had on Parasite. The next, uh, it's, this one's maybe a little of a stretch, but I thought of it is the movie Hell or High Water from a couple of years ago. I thought of this movie because it's also about characters that uh, are struggling between the, the haves and the have-nots. Uh, it's also very focused on individual characters and it has a sense of place. Uh, and particularly there's sort of a heist element to it of trying to get the money for his, uh, for his family uh, and uh, these bank heists. And so it's a, a little bit different, but I think it has a similar kind of message and theme and it's very stylish and you get to know these characters that are complex and, and uh, not necessarily doing the right things, but you're still kind of rooting for them. Uh, and so that's why I thought of Hell or High Water. Then next we have The Irishman. Uh, this one is pretty obvious. I think you, you'd have to say The Godfather. It's also about an aging mob man, uh, the, the, the Don, uh, the Godfather and his family. And you see that also in The Irishman about him and his family. Of course, The Godfather sort of focuses on Michael uh, more than on uh, on veto and uh, but you know they both get quite a bit of time but it's all about the the whole kind of life and choices of these people uh, and you say the same also about the godfather part two which is basically a prequel so uh, both of them i think are similar in style and feel and obviously they both have the moth the mafia involved i think it's a pretty good comparison but i think much better uh then i would say the movie donnie brasco and i think that particularly the end of the irishman i think is very similar to this movie it stars johnny depp and he plays an undercover agent who goes uh, to follow the gets deep undercover following the mob and he becomes kind of a protege of Al Pacino, but the whole time he's obviously spilling his guts to the the FBI and everybody. And uh, but the more he gets sort of uh, immersed in the mob, the more he feels like he's being disloyal and has, starts to have challenges. And uh, and so I think it's kind of similar in a way to the Irishman, whereas the the more that he kind of follows orders, the more sort of it, it impacts his life. And then by the end, he starts to have questions about uh, his loyalties and where what he did and did he do the right thing and kind of a thing. And you see some of that dynamic in Donnie Brasco. And I think Donnie Brasco is pretty underrated as a mom movie. I think it's pretty, it, it's a little bit faster paced and it's just a little bit more, um, I don't know. It's just less self-indulgent than some of these other mob movies. So if you haven't seen it, I really recommend it. It's got, it's very well acted and it's a good story. So next I have little women. And so this one's a little bit of a cheat. I have the 1994 little women just because I feel like you really should see it to compare this version with that version. They're both very, very good, uh, but they're quite different. So it's an interesting comparison between the two. Now, if you want something else besides little women, I think any, uh, Jane Austen adaptation. I think I would recommend The Sense of Sensibility by Ang Lee. Uh, you really get a sense of these sisters in that movie and their uh, their different personalities and how they uh, learn to love each other and and deal with each other. And so I, I think that one's a really good one. Also, I would pick Jane Eyre from 2011. You've got Michael Fassbender in that one. You have, I can't think of her name, but she's really good. Um, and, uh, and this is beautifully filmed. Uh, it's, it's got a similar sort of, I think, poetic style of Little Women. And obviously they're both, uh, they both have romance and, and 
romantic struggle and they're both based on classic novels and i just think that if you like little women then i think you'll really enjoy this jane Eyre. the next is jojo rabbit so the first one that i thought of with jojo rabbit is one of the classic political satires that has ever been released it's dr strange love and how i learned to love the atomic bomb uh, this has so many funny uh, lines particularly from peter sellers uh, and uh it's very irreverent very funny and uh i uh, it's the perfect perfect choice if you love jojo rabbit uh watch dr strange so it doesn't have quite the heart that jojo rabbit has but it's very funny uh and then i would recommend the producers and i actually like both versions i mean i I don't know. Some reason I sometimes I even think I like the musical one a little bit better, just because I love musicals and music. It's not my favorite comedy, but I still do like it. And it's it's just such an obvious comparison because you have these people that are trying to make the worst musical ever made, and we have Springtime for Hitler, and so you have all these dancing Nazis and just ridiculousness. And so I think if you like Judge Rabbit, give either of the producers a shot and then the last one is marriage story and the first thing that i thought of with marriage story is kramer versus kramer there are some things about this that are a little dated as far as the way that the meryl streep character is portrayed but she did leave her family and uh, so i mean <laughs> that's not great um and there it's just it's about their divorce and about their their marriage and uh, and their custody battle and so i think uh, it's very similar uh, and well acted dustin hoffman great in it so i would recommend that and then the other one that i would recommend is before midnight technically they're not actually married but they've been in they're basically in like a common law marriage they've been together for so long and we've seen celine and jesse grow and change and now they're actually like in this committed relationship and they're uh they do it has a different ending than marriage story but the conflict the fighting the the different perspectives the way that they both kind of resent certain parts of of their lives together but then they love each other uh is i think very similar and so if you like marriage story i think before midnight would be a really good choice uh and so there we go that is my recommendations for you uh, with the best picture nominees so let me know what you think and what you would recommend for each of these best picture nominees i would love to hear your thoughts and thanks so much please scratch my channel consider becoming a patron we have so much fun in our patron group we also have our merch store so check that out and thanks so much i'll talk to y'all later bye